Biodiversity is the bacteria in your stomach, the algae in a pond, the spiders in your house, the genes that are the code to create a human. A small patch of grassland, the mosaic of habitats on an island, the Amazon rainforests. In short, biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth. At all levels, from genes through to individual organisms, to species, to vast and expensive habitats, and the links and interaction between all of this. Hello there students, you're watching ITTV. Thank you for watching ITTV. In today's lesson, we have something new. We are going to learn all about biodiversity. So what is today's lesson all about? We will learn today, organism and their classification, part one. What is biodiversity, students? Biodiversity, in short, actually means biological diversity. So that is biodiversity. What is the proper definition for biodiversity? Let's have a look at the graphic. There are millions of different types of organisms living on this planet. For example, humans, sparrows, lions, mushrooms and elephants. The white variety of organisms on earth is known as biodiversity. So when you think about all the organisms in the world, the wide variety of them, they are known as biodiversity. This is the definition of biological diversity. The variety of organism can be classified using an appropriate classification method. Now, did you know students that biodiversity is found all around us? What do I mean by that? On Earth, we have got different climates, different weather, so we have got different types of places and habitat. So let's see what kind of animals can actually live in certain habitats in this world. Biodiversity is found everywhere around us. What do I mean? Have a look at this picture and the animals and the plants that you can find in a normal pond. We have got frogs, we have got fishes, water lilies and other types of plants which live in the pond. This is known as the pond's diversity. Let's see further. Next, we have got desert. In the desert, we have got different kinds of animals and plants like the cactus, jackrabbit, kangaroo rat and mainly the camels. What about a tough, different type of habitat? Now, in the polar region, we have got seals, arctic fox, penguins and so on living in the polar region. Now, do you know, students, that in the polar region, in the North Pole, we have got the polar bears and in the South Pole, we have got the penguins. The polar bears and the penguins never get a chance to meet. What about the next or the last type of habitat? Lastly, we have got soils. In the soils, we can find funguses, ants, earthworms and centipedes, also millipedes. Now, this is where they actually live. Now, we have got different types of animals, different types of plants living in soils, polar regions, deserts, ponds and so on. So, this is all known as biodiversity. So, how do you actually classify them, students? Let's see how you classify all the living organisms on Earth. What did the scientists actually do? They came up with a very intelligent method. Classification of organism. A classification system is required to group living things methodically because of their large number and types. Although they possess common general characteristics, organisms from the same species still have distinctive characteristics which differ them from other species. So each species would have their special characteristics. This is how the scientists actually geniusly classified the animals and plants and and different types of living organism on earth today into different groups. Let's see further. Nobody actually knows how many species of organism are there but scientists have estimated about 10 to 100 million kinds of organism on earth. So till today nobody actually knows how many different species we have living on the planet earth. The sorting of these organisms into groups is known as classification of organism. Scientists use the similarities and differences among organisms to classify them. Firstly, organisms of same characteristic are placed together in the same group. Now, let's say a kind of organism, all of them have got wings, so they are thus placed into the same groups, groups of having wings. 
each group is further divided into smaller and even smaller group. Now I said just now, for example, organisms which have got wings. Now put them into a group, then you further classify them. Maybe they have got different types of feathers. They have got large, big or blue feathers or they have got white feathers which are small or tiny. So this is how they spread them into smaller groups. Let's see further. The smaller the group, the more similarities there are. So this is how the scientists actually classified different types of living organism on earth by classifying them into specific groups according to their species and into smaller groups. So what kind of classification do we actually have right now? We have got five different kingdoms. Now what are they? Firstly, animals or animalia. Next we have got plants or plantae. Then we have fungi or fungi and bacteria or known as monera. And lastly, very simple organisms which are called protista. These were the five main kingdoms that we have which actually classify all the living organisms on earth. Now among these five, we have got the two most popular ones. Which are they students? Obviously the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. In our future lessons, we would cover regarding this kingdom. Now let's move over to the Do You Know segment to learn further regarding the differences between these five kingdoms that we have on earth today. What are the main differences between these kingdoms? Kingdoms Animalia, plantae and fungi are alike because they are all multi-celled organisms. The organisms in kingdoms Protista and Monera are all single cell. The organisms that move around are from kingdoms Animalia and Protista. Kingdoms Fungi, plantae and Monera don't move around. The relationship between kingdoms Animalia and fungi is that they eat or absorb food. Kingdom plantae contain chlorophyll because they make their food. Kingdom monera and protista are unique because they fall into both the categories above. So this was the main differences between the five kingdoms that we have right now. So let's see or learn further regarding the kingdom of fungi. What is the kingdom fungi all about? There are many different types of fungi such as mushrooms, athlete's food, mole, yeast, bracket fungi and many more. This is an example of a picture showing you mushroom. Next we have bracket fungi. See how they grow on trees. They are disc-like in shape. And lastly we have got yeast. Fungi are animal-like and plant-like. They are not plants because they don't contain chlorophyll. They are not animals because they absorb their food, not eat it. Now you have learned something about the kingdom of fungi, remember all their characteristics and the examples in the kingdom of fungi. So this was about the do you know segment. Let's move further to learn how do you actually classify the large or the very popular animal kingdom. Now, so far, scientists have actually discovered 1 million living species of animals. How many more or how many hundreds or thousands more are still a mystery to us? You may never know. So how do you actually classify the animal kingdom? Scientists have classified animals into two main groups. Firstly, animals with backbone called the vertebrates and next, animals without backbone called the invertebrates. So when you think about the animal kingdom, you must remember the word backbone. So with the backbone, they are called vertebrates. Without them, they are called invertebrates. Now we are going to learn in today's lesson regarding the invertebrates. And in next lesson, we shall learn further about the vertebrates. The invertebrates, more than 90% of animals are invertebrates. They are usually small in size. This is because they do not have a backbone to support their weight. Invertebrates also have simple body system. So when you think about the invertebrates, think about how they actually cover 90% of the animals on the planet today. And the invertebrates actually have got very tiny body compared to the vertebrates. What are examples of invertebrates? 
Examples of invertebrates are firstly the insects. They make up about 90% of invertebrates. So mainly most of the invertebrates are actually insects. The main feature regarding the insect is an adult insect is characterized by three pairs of jointed legs and a segmented body. So three pairs of jointed legs meaning they have got how many legs? Six legs and a jointed body or segmented body. Let's see further how or what types of invertebrates do we actually have. Other than the insect, we have got molluscs. Next we have crabs. Prawns, starfish, and lastly, the octopus. Now students, I'm sure you can actually figure out that most of the invertebrates are living in the sea, like the crabs, prawns, octopus, molluscs, and so on. Other than the insects, which cover about 90% of the total number of invertebrates, the rest are actually living under the sea. Now, how do you actually classify these invertebrates? By the support system, of course. The support system of invertebrates consists of exoskeleton, which is hard outer shell. Now, example of the exoskeleton animals are crabs, prawns, centipedes. Now, there are many more. Whatever you can find, hard outer covering or exoskeleton, they are actually classified into this category. Now, other than the exoskeleton, which is the hard covering, we also have hydrostatic frame. What are they? Hydrostatic frame, the example of animals are earthworm, caterpillars, planaria and jellyfish. So when you remember regarding all these animals which I just spoke about like the earthworm, planaria, jellyfish, crabs, prawns, centipedes and so on, you must remember how to classify them. We have got the main method which is exoskeleton and hydrostatic frame. And these are two different types of support system for the invertebrates. Now how further can you classify the invertebrates? Invertebrates can be further classified into with jointed legs. Now remember students that we have to classify them with jointed legs and without jointed legs. Let's start for the example of animals with jointed legs first. Shall we start with the three pairs of legs first? For example are ants, bees, beetles and butterflies. So those were animals or insects which have got three pairs of legs. How do you classify them further? Three pairs of legs. Next, let's have a look at examples of insects and animals which have got four pairs of legs. With jointed legs, four pairs of legs. Examples of them are spiders, scorpions and mites. So further, how do we classify animals with jointed legs? Lastly, we have with jointed legs, more than four pairs of legs, the millipedes, the centipedes, crabs and prawns. See how we have classified them with jointed legs? Now what about examples of animals which do not have jointed legs or without jointed legs? We have got types of animals without jointed legs but with segmented body. Examples of them are earthworm, flatworms and leeches. What about without jointed legs but without segmented body as well. Let's see. Without jointed legs and non-segmented body, snails, octopus, shellfish and lastly jellyfish. Now can you see students how do they actually classify them? They took a characteristics like jointed legs. They classified them into with jointed legs and without jointed legs. We have got two groups now. Then further in the jointed legs, they classified them into the pairs of legs, three, four and more. And in the part where they had without jointed legs, they classified them into segmented and non-segmented body. They found a big or large group and further divided them into smaller groups. This is how the scientists actually classified animals and all the living organisms in this planet. This is actually an example to show you how to classify them. Now this is about today's lesson. Let's move over to the exercise or the exam lab section to see how much of today's lesson you actually understood. Let's see question one, shall we? Question one. 
what is the definition of biodiversity? Now, biodiversity is actually short form for biological diversity. Let's see what is the proper definition. The answer is the wide variety of organisms on earth is known as biodiversity. So this is the proper definition for biodiversity. Let's move over to question 2. Question 2. Which of the following is not an example of an invertebrate? Now what's an invertebrate student? It is animals without backbone. A. Snail B. Snake C. Octopus D. Beetle now what do you think is the correct answer here students? Is it snake? Is it octopus? Beetle? Or which is it? Let's see. The correct answer is B. Snake. Now snakes are not invertebrates. Though they may seem to you like they are long and slender and they do not have backbone. But don't be mistaken. They actually fall into the group of reptiles. Now reptiles have got backbone. Now if you get a chance, see the backbone of a snake. They would be actually very long following its body length. Let's see question 3. Question 3. Name the five kingdoms of life that you know. Now I have told you in the beginning of the lesson regarding the five main kingdoms of how the scientists have classified all the living organism. Let's see the answer. The answer is kingdoms are animals, animalia, plants, plantae, fungi, bacteria or monera and lastly very simple organisms which are called protista. These are the five main kingdoms that we have. Let's see the last question for the day. Question 4. Which of the following is an invertebrate with exoskeleton? A. Jellyfish B. Crab C. Octopus and D. Caterpillar now what's an exoskeleton students? Exoskeleton is actually the hard covering of an invertebrate. So what is the correct answer here? The correct answer is B. Crab. Now jellyfish, octopus, caterpillar are actually what kind of support system do they have students? They have got hydrostatic frame. They do not have exoskeleton like the crabs. So this was about the exam lab of the day. Shall we move over to the summary of the day to do a quick recap of today's lesson of biodiversity. The wide variety of organisms on earth is known as biodiversity. Scientists use the similarity and differences among organisms to classify them. Organisms of same characteristic are placed together in the same group. Each group is further divided into smaller and even smaller group. The smaller the group, the more similarities there are. Scientists have classified animals into two main groups. Animals with backbone called the vertebrates. Animals without backbone called the invertebrates. The support system of invertebrates consists of exoskeleton or hard outer shell. Examples of animals are crabs, prawns and centipedes. And the next support system is hydrostatic frame. Examples of animals are earthworm, caterpillars, planarians and jellyfish. So this is all for today's lesson. I would see you soon in our next lesson which is part 2 of organism and their classification. In that lesson you would learn further students regarding the vertebrates. Till I see you soon in our next lesson. Have fun learning. Take care and thank you for watching ITTV. Thank you.